Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss how our Brexit government is planning to reduce our domestic medicines agency into a, a group that will only seemingly exist to formalise EU and US rules on medicines and medical products rather than be a driving force for the sort of regulatory leadership that Boris Johnson boasted about. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, as the vaccination programme started to lift off in the UK, Boris Johnson saw an opportunity to try and get people thinking more kindly about Brexit. Sort of needed to, because that was biting from the beginning. So at the start of the programme, our vaccine rollout outstripped that of EU countries. It hasn't now. We've been overtaken, with more and more countries in Europe surging ahead of us. This is because we basically grabbed all the supplies at the start. We went, oh, you've got some supplies for us. Great, thanks. Thanks very much. Have we got any for you? No, no, we, we need to keep all these. But we have now run into supply issues where the EU have not. But earlier in the year, the government could claim that our vaccine rollout was better than the EU's. It objectively was at the time. Johnson further added that it would have been impossible if we'd remained in the EU. This was not at all true. Although most Euro EU countries uh, adopted a common approach to vaccination, they weren't compelled to. They chose to. In fact, two EU members did their own thing as well in using supplies of a vaccine from Russia. But Johnson claimed it anyway, and without a robust fact check from either the media or Labour, you can see how a lot of people would have fallen for it. Johnson further went in to say that having our own independent medicines regulator, as opposed to being a member of the European Medicines Agency, was instrumental in this vaccine success. Again, wrong. More than that lies. We were still a member of the European Medicines Agency. When we started our vaccine programme, we were still in the European Medicines Agency. We still follow the rules now and will for the rest of this year and next year as well. But Johnson was boasting about how his own body, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA, would be the driving force for a new golden age in British medicine and was very much part of his plans for future economic growth. Great, fantastic, nothing wrong with that if he meant it. The UK has uh, not only a strong history in the field of medical research, but in the present as well. Of course, I could argue that it was always going to be difficult to maintain these lofty achievements without being able to attract the best talent from around the world. The ending of freedom of movement was always going to be a serious blow to all of our scientific research. But our new post-Brexit immigration policy may not have been a barrier to top researchers because in theory they'll say, oh, no, no, but you know, the, the best researchers will get in on the point system. But it has very often that same system been very unkind to their families. To say nothing of the way our society is now giving voice to the racists and making parts of the UK an unpleasant place to live for foreign nationals. But it seems that Johnson is now actively hampering our ability to compete on the world stage with medical research now. After all, the unpleasant environment for foreign talent was an indirect consequence of his Brexit policy. Not, an, not a direct one. It wasn't the intended one. Well, at least not for some of them. Pretty Patel might be a different thing. But with the new round of Tory austerity being announced, the MHRA is having its budget cut and severely. The thing about having your own agency, as opposed to pooling talent with other countries, is that it's less efficient. See, I talked recently about the EU's Aviation Safety Agency. Our contribution to that was £4 million a year. But no, we had to make our own version. And according to the government's own figures last year, that was going to cost us £40 million a year. Ten times as much for an agency that does exactly the same work and can only pull its talent from one country. Economic madness. But the point is that to do the same thing on your own, it costs way more because you're doing all the work yourself. The same would apply to the MHRA. Rather than contributing to an EU-wide agency, we're paying for the whole thing ourselves. And it is that. It's not like you think to yourself, ah, but it's only going to do the work for the UK. That's, no, it has to do all the same work. Because what's it, what's it for? Medical products like drugs, for example, it's about saying how, whether they're suitable or in wonder what circumstances they're suitable, that sort of thing, registering. 
them, they have to register all the same drugs as the EU. You know, drugs that need registering for, for use in France or Belgium, the same drugs that need registering for use in the UK. So our agency has to do all the same work that the EU agency has to do. Only it's been paid for by just a single country, us. So to do the same work, it will need a vastly increased budget. So now consider what the consequences of having that budget actually reduced. Reduced so much, in fact, that a quarter of its staff are going to be made redundant, according to reports. Well, that means you can't actually do the same job as the European Medicines Agency, can you? No, of course not. So it's not getting a budget increase, but a budget cut. It cannot possibly do its regulatory job of assessing drugs and other products for suitability. Can't do it, simple as that. And these cuts have come, ironically, as a direct result of Brexit. You know, we used to have money pouring into the UK from the regulatory work we did for the European Medicines Agency. We used to house the headquarters, it was here. That move to the Netherlands in 2019, taking all those jobs and millions of pounds a year with it. And it seems that our agency, which is now part of the Department for Health and Social Care, has been told, oh, you seem to have a 15 million pound hole in your finances. Oh, really? You mean leaving the EU and losing all that EU business has meant that the books don't look as good? Who could possibly have foreseen that? But there it is, rather than invest and give the agency a new lease of life, facilitating world standard medical research of the sort Boris Johnson boasted about, the Tories have decided they don't actually want to fund public bodies uh, if the maths is at all challenging, so they're just going to shrink it instead. Ah, uh, you're not making enough money, so you get rid of a load of stuff. So what will it be doing? Well, the Financial Times reported on a letter that they'd seen being sent to the chief executive, Dr June Rain, from senior members within the agency. Uh, they say the trajectory of these budget cuts seems to be that the agency will basically exist to rubber stamp the work of their EU and US equivalents. Now I'll take each of those uh, bodies one at a time because they, they have different implications I think. So our own post-Brexit agency will exist to rubber stamp EMA decisions. What will happen is we will go to the European Medicines Agency and think, yeah, oh, you've been doing some cracking research there, thank you very much. Could we have some? Brilliant, thanks. And then we take it back to our own people and say, look, the EU have done all the work on this. Just sign it off, will you? You know, so that, so the European Medicine Agency, which Johnson has been slating, remember, they're actually going to carry out the work for us. They're going to decide the parameters for the suitable use of various drugs. Our own MHRA will then just get the documentation and go, yeah, that, yeah, that looks like a nice font. That's all fine. Sign it off. Now, how does that fit the Brexit narrative? We're creating a medicines agency whose job it will be to just agree with what the EU version says. The EU version that, according to Boris Johnson, is a load of rubbish. How many Brexit voters are going to tell me that it's fine and they knew that they were voting for that back in 2016? But that's just the political nonsense. We then have the notion that they will also rubber stamp decisions from the USA, the FDA, I suppose. Now, in many cases, this will just represent the same loss of sovereignty that rubber stamping EMA decisions does. Because that's what this is. For all their talk of sovereignty, Brexit supporters are yet to point out any enhanced sovereignty that Brexit has brought us. But I can point to examples of where it's cost us, and this is one. In the EU, we were a huge part of the European Medicines Agency. You know, as I said, we housed the headquarters, made a fortune from it. Now our post-Brexit role is going to be to have no say whatsoever in those decisions. But we're going to adapt, adopt their findings anyway, we are going to follow what the European Medicines Agency tells us to. This is a spectacular loss of sovereignty. Just like we now have to follow more EU rules than we ever did as members, the ones the Mail and the Express keep complaining about, and we have zero say in them. Loss of sovereignty. But with the United States, where profit is absolutely king in the pharmaceutical industry, I'm not always convinced that rubber stamping US decisions on the use of drugs will be in the patient's interest. See, with the EU agency, it just represents a loss of control, a loss of focus that's in our interest. With the US agencies, it might represent a compromise of either value for money or quality of healthcare. But this is just another example of how Brexit is weakening us yet again. The government will claim that they can reduce the budget 
and number of staff for an agency and still try to say that it's going to do world leading work. That's what they're saying. That's what they say. Oh, it's going to do world leading work with a smaller budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With less staff. Oh, absolutely. Like, like the trick, you know, to making teams better and stronger is reduce their budget and staff. How does a footballing nation even fall for that, Tosh? Imagine telling a Manchester United fan that all they have to do is cut the budget in half and reduce their squad and they'll suddenly start dominating the football world again. Anyone would think you were insane if you suggested that. Yet some of the same people must be believing the same when it's applied to a medicines agency or an aviation safety agency or even whole government departments. Oh yeah, we make them better by cutting the budget and cutting staff. Right, what? No? And what's worse is that when Boris Johnson said that the agency helped us enormously during the pandemic, he was right. One of the few things he said that wasn't a, a lie. Our response would have been much worse without them. They prevented ministers making even bigger asses of themselves than they did. You know, the agency is now being scaled back. The outlook will not look so good for the next pandemic or even serious healthcare problem. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.